Uh, Chris James Comey says the president is untethered to the truth. The president says Comey is an untruthful slime ball. But do you think this book is likely to change anybody's mind about either of these two men? No, probably not. Uh, you're either for one or you're for the other. It may lower people's opinions about both of them. Uh, I think the real takeaway from the book is that for all the talk about bombshells, there really aren't any. That uh, to the degree that there were bombshells, Comey told them under oath to Senate committees uh, in hearings last year. And uh, we, you hear a lot of unpleasant opinions uh, very insulting opinions of the president, as you say, untethered to the truth, comparing him to a mob boss, all of that stuff. Also, some kind of snarky personal details that he's shorter than Comey thought he was and that his hands are about normal size. Uh, <laughs> but, but in terms of adding another brick to the president's legal load, it really doesn't. And, and which is one of the reasons that I think that, you know, it'll sell a lot of books, get a lot of attention. And then like a lot of these books, like Fire and Fury, it'll go away. Now, Chris, how do you think Republicans on Capitol Hill would respond if the president were to fire Special Counsel Mueller or Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein? I think it would be explosive. That, you, if the Comey book is not such a big deal, that would be a very big deal. Uh, you've heard it from a number of top officials, including the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, the Chairman of the uh, Senate Judiciary Committee, Chuck Grassley, who said it would be suicide, uh, Lindsey Graham, who has said it would be the end of the Trump presidency. You know, there has been a lot of talk about alleged obstruction of justice uh, with the firing of Comey and other things that the president has done. If he now fires the man who has been for, what, a year now investigating him, uh, we're, we're really talking about the potential for a constitutional crisis. I will say, though, I mean, and you never know with this president, but there is no indication that he's about to do that. And all of this comes as the president and some of our allies are considering how to respond uh, in Syria after the chemical attack there. Did the president in any way box himself in with that tweet promising the missiles are coming? Yeah, uh, I mean, but I think only in a political sense, not in a military sense. Look, we have got uh, all kinds of assets steaming to the eastern Mediterranean within firing distance of Syria. The French are doing the same. The British are doing the same. I think it would be a real shock now if there wasn't a, a military action against Syria for its use of chemical weapons, either sooner or later. And by that, I mean either a, a couple of days or maybe a week. But I, I, I think that would be a real issue, particularly because the president criticized Barack Obama so fiercely for not enforcing his red line. If Donald Trump were to do that now, he will be hammered for it. But if, if what's going on here is just getting all the ducks in a row and, and considering what do we do the day after to make sure that this isn't just a one-off, we send a bunch of missiles, makes a lot of uh, people in the West feel good, but it accomplishes nothing in terms of what's going on in Syria. Uh, you know, if they're, if they're trying to figure out what they are going to do to make this have some real impact, I suppose that's a smart thing to do. I, I will say, though, the delay has a cost, and, that, and that's already happened, which is that the Syrians have already flown all of their important military assets, particularly their airplanes, uh, to Latakia, which is the Russian uh, air base on the Mediterranean. And I don't think there's any reason to expect that the U.S. is going to attack a Russian air base. I mean, that takes us on the road to a superpower confrontation. Yeah, that would be terrible. Uh, interesting that uh, the president, it sounds like he's flirting with the idea of uh, returning to the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Do you think that's a real thing or did he just say that in front of a bunch of uh, farm state lawmakers to make them happy? No, I think that that, that that is a real thing. And I think part of the problem is that, you know, he really wants to take on China now and, and, and get them to stop a lot of their predatory trading practices, the theft of intellectual property. And I think he realizes that he kind of unilaterally disarmed by cutting himself off from our 11 trading partners in the Pacific that had opened up a vacuum that China is filling. So if he can somehow get back in to that deal, although an awful lot of the stuff that the negotiators who worked for years to get in was taken out after he pulled out the first time, a lot of the pro-U.S. trading interests. Uh, if he can get back in, I think he feels that that will unite the Pacific Rim against China, which is something he wants, if only for leverage. So I think he's serious about it, but boy, uh, there are an awful lot of people who think it was a mistake to pull out of the TPP in the first place. Uh, although that certainly was one of the things that he ran on. Uh, one last question, if you don't mind, on this busy Friday. Uh, 
Do you think it's a coincidence that the president has decided today to pardon Scooter Libby, the former top aide to Dick Cheney, uh, over the Valerie Plame affair, claiming that he was treated unfairly by the special counsel? No, I, I mean, <laughs> you'd have to be awfully naive to think that, it, that it's a coincidence. I mean, there are reasons to pardon Scooter Libby. One of the major witnesses against him has recanted her testimony. Uh, there were a lot of folks who thought that he never should have been uh, convicted in the first place in the, in the outing of Valerie Plame, this undercover CIA operative, and that if he was, that, that Bush 43 should have pardoned him. So, I mean, there are, on the merits, reasons to do it. But do I think that it, it has anything to do with the fact that one, uh, he's now, he, the president, is now the subject of a special counsel investigation, and two, that James Comey has come out with this book this weekend? No, I think you'd have to be awfully naive to think that. Yeah. Uh, what do you have coming up on the, how, how are you going to fit all this in the program this weekend? <laughs> We're not. It's going to be uh, two hours, so tell the go. affiliate there, <laughs> there in Atlanta go. to give us some extra time. No, uh, we're going to be, first of all, talking about uh, the Syria strike, whether it happens by Sunday or not. It certainly looks like it's in the offing. We think we're going to have a top national security uh, official from the Trump administration to discuss what the plan and the situation is there. Uh, and then we're going to be talking with Congressman Trey Gowdy, the head of the special, the House uh, Oversight Committee, who's been looking into this whole question of FBI and the way they've handled or mishandled the Trump investigation. He's look at, also looking into ethical allegations against Scott Pruitt. Talk to him about all that. Also, the Comey book. And who knows what else will come up in the next 36 hours. And we'll look forward to it, as always. Chris, thanks very much. Thank you, Russ.